Hi, everyone. I am from India and this happened with my best friend. This is so mind-numbing that all our friends as a group are still haunted to this day. Our offices started to work on 50% capacity. As per the pandemic, my friend and I live quite close to each other, in New Delhi which also happens to be the capital of the country. It's busy, bustling with new people every day. And of course it's vibrant. It was a rough time for my friend, Naya, as she had lost her grandparents to COVID, with whom she was living last year. Her parents were divorced, and she had little relevance to them, and vice versa. I was over her place since morning, and in the evening she was supposed to meet one of her friend, that she had met on Tinder. He was traveling to her place, and it was the first time they were meeting. After talking for about nine months, I was a bit skeptical of her meeting. The guy at her place since he was unknown, no matter what. I tried to make her meet at a public place. But she was adamant. To bring the boy home, my friend is very peculiar about not sharing her bed, and never shares her bed with anyone. She always sleeps in her bed, no matter what, and anybody sharing room, with her head to sleep, either on a bedding in her room, or use the guest room. I was laughing crazy. <laughs> when she told me, that she will make the guy also sleep on the bedding, and not her bed. If he wants to sleep in her room. It was evening. He arrived at her place. I met the guy, and was so anxious about him, being there with my friend. I told her to rethink, and that if she say he can have dinner at her place, and afterwards can go sleep in some hotel. Naya, on the other hand was happy and told me chill, with a heavy heart. I left for my place. I was so scared for her safety that upon leaving, I told the security guards to please keep a check on her. I barely slept, and as if I knew this was not going to end well, I heard my phone ring around 2.30 am. What followed was a long day of dread trauma and a never-dying fear. As I answered my phone, I heard my friend scream. <coughs> and the phone hung up. I ran barefoot to her place. I cursed myself for not making her understand enough to not let strangers in the house. I knew the guy had a off tone about himself. I knew he will do bad out of all the stories I have heard in the past about creepy strangers befriending girls to do their creepy stuff. I arrived at her place and found her horrified running. And before I could fathom I saw the boy running towards me, with her phone in his hand. I started to run and catch him but he ran, straight to the security guards. Me and my friend confronted him, and he shouted at us for being so stupid. He was continuously urging the security guards to accompany him to Naya's flat, and they were constantly trying to calm all of us down. When we heard someone running not able to see anyone, we all rushed to the CCTV room to see who ran to the back side. What we saw made our blood ran cold. There was a man running out from my friend's flat, and ran opposite to the main gate to the back side. We immediately informed the police, that the guy who was at her place, was acting weird. Once he laid down on the bedding, and starting throwing things in her house, when she refused to call him a cab to go to a hotel, and ran outside with her phone to the security guards. The guy very patiently came back into the house, with us, and made us see under Naya's bed, there was luggage, a sleeping mat under her bed. 
The guy started telling us about the moment. We could have all died. He said as he laid down on the bedding next to her bed, he saw what looks like hairs of a person. His gaze shifted down, and he saw a neck and back of a skinny person towards him. He immediately wanted to scream, but saw the person under the bed move his face towards him and saw his eyes open. The man didn't saw him or did is still a mystery. The guy acted as if nothing has happened, and that he has not seen the man. He calmly went to the kitchen, saying he wants to eat something, and started shouting that Naya has nothing to eat in the house. He said he needs to leave and asked for Naya's phone, when Naya told him to use his own phone, and started dialing my number. He snatched his phone and ran outside, watching the man creep out from under her bed. In dim lit room, Naya screamed <coughs> and ran behind him. When I arrived and we all saw the scene, a few days after the man was caught, the police made us see him from a distance. I can never forget those deep sinking black eyes and the gloomy creepy face of that man. The police told us that the man was a mental patient turned killer. His prey were always alone living girls. He was living in Nia's apartment since a week and he knew all about her schedule. He even knew that she was lazy to never clean under her bed. He surveyed and got her office time and her weekend plans. He crept inside her flat on the previous weekend and lived, ate, bathed in the same house. He slept under her bed, trying to contemplate when to kill her. He watched her sleep and even tickled her toes in her sleep, sometimes cut off her hairs and made a little ponytail, and kept with him under her bed. While he slept, he often smelled her clothes after she was gone and tried her perfumes. He would sometimes make scary noises, for her to get up scared. And would watch her sitting scared on her bed behind the cupboard in the darkest corner. And the day I was at her place, he had planned to kill us both. But I chose to leave. As Naya was expecting her friend, the man had planned to kill them both, too that night. The creepy stranger actually turned out to be a life savior. Not only the guy was extremely vigilant and proactive, but he was the most patient person I had seen. The man surrendered and confessed killing a few girls in other parts of the country. He was recently hanged and well I can just feel so numb, and petrified at the sheer fickle, our lives are. Imaging sleeping in a bed not knowing there is someone under your bed, or being killed by some unknown intruder, in your bed not knowing where did they came from. Imagine a hand creeping up from under your bed. I feel if there had been a ghost under her bed, would have been more calming and less nerve-wracking to realize the least. I don't mind saying that the living must be feared more than the dead. The former are more sinister. Good night y'all please check under your bed. I hope you all liked the story. If you liked it, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.